Okay, my name is Valentine from Chaga Coast. I'm going to be talking to you about the agenda, case studies, and the underpinning knowledge. Obviously, I will try and uh, zoom that into strategic business leader, which is our focus for 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 today. Okay, uh, I think I may have uh, just last week we had a conversation with ACCA, and they were asking. As Chatter Quest, are you ready to teach strategic business leader? Uh, we said, yeah, we think we are ready, and not knowing that they were going to use that to set us up to come and share our level of readiness. I'm not so sure anymore to what extent we are, uh, we are ready, but the idea is to share as much as we can what we have prepared or what we are prepared respect to this particular course, which is about to start in September. The brief that we had was, uh, please try and talk a bit about uh, how to teach case studies, what works, what doesn't work, case studies in general. You asked us, ACCA, to look at the strategic business leader, the exam format and style. You also wanted us to talk about the exam requirements and how we plan to approach that so that uh, as much as possible, uh, other colleges can share into that input into that, take from that and see what they can learn from in terms of what we are doing. Now, in order to deliver on that brief, uh, we have prepared some, what I would call a five-point agenda. General insights into case studies. I'll talk a bit about uh, the integrated case study, which is the direction that ACC is trying to go, and some global and thought leaders in that particular space. Why is this important? looking at how other institutions approach case studies can form a very good foundation in terms of understanding what ACC is trying to do and how we're going to prepare our students. Okay, how to teach case studies. Uh, obviously, we have, we have been teaching case studies for some years, so I'll share with you uh, aspects of our Chatter Quest methodology, what we do, how we plan that, and what successes we've achieved on the ground. Obviously, that's quite generic. There has to be some adaptations now to make it talk to the strategic business leader case. With respect to the exam format and style, which is one of the aspects that you asked us to zoom into, basically what we're going to, what we try to do is to look at, yeah, this is what ACC wants to do with respect to the, the format and style, but let's look at what other professional bodies are doing, what is similar, what is different, and here's why it is important. As you, most of you are already institution partners that provide uh, case study training. I'm sure you're already doing CIMA and ACCA. So we felt that looking at how other professional bodies do theirs could help us draw insight in terms of what is different with ACCA and how we can approach that different. That's why we thought it important to, to get into that. Now, the unseen, which is the uh, what you face when you do the exam, simply injects new information about possible weaknesses that this company has to address, or possible opportunities, or possible threats. So if you go into the exam with some understanding of these strengths and weaknesses, you, 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 are, you have some form of head start in terms of anticipating what sorts of things you are likely to face. Now, once we do that, even prior to the exam, and, and again, this is going to pose a fundamental challenge. We have this luxury of doing this. Uh, for 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 Saika, for Sima, because we have a prison. So we have a case study from which we can show would have been significantly developed from your understanding of this, including its mission, its vision, its strategic direction. I see ACC is now uh, trying to link up the P1 and P2. You use the strategic direction elements more from the governance point of view, but also capture elements from that from P3 to try and put that to move the strategic of the company company forward. But so there are some adaptations necessary, but we will typically do this. And then based on this, we say, okay, these things have to be addressed. 
They've just given us some information and they will develop it on the day of the exam. If we're going to respond to this threat, how do we respond to this threat? If we're going to correct these weaknesses, that helps us to now introduce all the, the, the models that you would typically expect. Also, you see that from, uh, from strategic business leader, uh, Porter's generic forces, and the BCG model, all those models. Those models will give you potential ideas from which you do your strategic choices to determine how you respond to these things that you've already seen in the prison. So we would typically do that to prepare our students to anticipate, and obviously from there we'll take them through mock scenarios where we inject a lot of scenarios that is based on these elements that we have developed further to help them uh, prepare their answers. So I'll say that almost from a general point of view. As a point that you will see subsequently what we plan to do to this framework uh, to make it talk in the case of uh, strategic business leader. Uh, we had some successes with that. Yes, we have had a number of successes with that. Uh, currently, the CIMA Global Business Challenge, Charter Quest is the champions. It was a competition run by CIMA around the world. We competed with all universities uh, locally and represented the right to represent uh, South Africa in Poland. And we came top six in the world. So we're currently the champions. We produced uh, global top four, four times. As through this case study, we've had a number of multiple 100% pass rates, especially at strategic level or the CIMA operational level is a bit of challenge, it averages around 70%. And then through that, from our own learning experiences, we've been able to develop a case study competition. So we have had some success on this. We are adapting that every single day. Look at what Harvard is doing, look at what other professional bodies are doing, and how do we improve on, improve on this. So, all right, all right, let's get out of out of that. Now let's start zooming that into uh, the strategic business in the exam format and start. Okay, uh, you had asked us to, to, to look at this. Yeah, we have a few things. We'll try to map out a few things. So look at, let's look at comparing the extent to which the scenarios or the case study, they are focused on real life examples. What are the similarities between SBL, Epibale, and the SBL event for the other professional bodies. All very good. So far, we've seen your uh, specimen one, specimen two, as well as your mock inside. Both all these professional bodies, their work is very much uh, aligned. You see, SBL is very integrated. You see, the T4 is very integrated. You're teaching T4 already, then you can be rest assured that there are, uh, or there's similar case studies, you can be rest assured that there are things that you can directly deploy into that to help you teach. Uh, strategic business leader, but yeah, we had the different. We started noticing a number of uh, a number of differences. Each CIMA case study integrates three modules. Cycas APC Board One is more or less four modules, which is a MANAP, the FINAP, and uh, the uh, auditing as well as taxation. It almost integrates those those four. ACCS sort of integrates two, which is your P one and your uh, and the P1 and P3. But the ACC has optional subjects later on, whereas the equivalent for these professional bodies, this, the application is the final exam. So you integrate it there, you're out. So, but ACC integrates two, but you still have to go and do two further uh, optional subjects. And each of those optional subjects, they rely a lot on whatever you've integrated. So technically, you can say ACC actually indirectly integrates uh, four of them. So we're thinking, uh, and that is almost where you start seeing the difference because even though with the other bodies, SIMA integrates three, uh, SICA integrates four, but SICA's integration is very much at the, at the technical level. But you find that all the four modules, the first two, which is P1 and P3, which ACC has integrated, plus the subsequent two that you're going to take, each of those you still have to draw a lot from your understanding of strategy. So when it comes to the degree of integration and the embeddedness of strategy, I really think ACC has now taken it one step uh, much further. So sometimes it's also good to do things uh, last. Because when you do it last, you can look at what others have done and then you can, uh, you can improve, on, uh, improve on that. Uh, other differences that we, we, we look at, um, with all these other professional bodies, they maintain the role. For instance, Sima would say, you are a management account of the company. And they will try and throw many different things. Some things come from the operational areas, but they will call you a management accountant. So you wear one hat. You are the management accountant.
But ACA tries to change the role, which is what ACA calls role play. Okay, now you are the management accountant, now you are the project manager, now you are the auditor. So ACA tries to change the role around. It poses a lot of uh, challenge, but, but then it, it, the good thing is uh, it helps you zoom deeper into the kind of integration which ACC is trying to bring to the board, which is good. The average person passing this module, by the time you finish ACC, you can be an accountant, you can be a project manager, you can be an IT guy. So, so really, to, to make you perform roles and shift your roles around really forces you to, uh, the candidate to think the, about the types of roles, not only the skills, but the attributes and values that you need to bring. So even structuring your course, you, you really need to look at, okay, this thing has all the dimensions. Now we need to think as an because if a question comes in this area, then it also wants you to wear the hat of an auditor. So you need to think about what the auditors really do, not only in terms of the technical content, but in terms of their values, their standards, and all the rest, because how you frame your answer. So that is going to pose a, a, a bit of uh, a bit of challenge. Uh, one thing that we also find is you just presented in the ethics model. What this other professional body do is fine, ethics is a key part of, but we we'll treat it more as values, and that will be integrated throughout the model. Uh, for instance, you emphasize a lot about professional ethics, but the other professional will emphasize professional as well as business ethics, which is a lot broader than professional ethics. I would imagine that in a strategic context, you will be faced with problems about, for instance, putting profit ahead of people, which is what executives have to deal with, which is not really professional ethics, but it puts you in constant dilemmas as a, as a strategist. But ACC seems to have, uh, to be treating ethics as a separate model, which uh, they've clearly outlined that you need to have gone through it in order to do well in a strategic business leader, which is good because you then bring on board some of the ethical values that you have brought as part of the but it also includes those professional skills. The jury is still out. Here's why I, I, I'm saying so. All the two, all the current specimen exams, specimen one, specimen two, and the mock inside specimen, none of those actually test ethics as part of the strategy of the business. That may mean that because ACC has packaged ethics as part of a separate module and has required candidates to go through it before they get to this level, maybe ACC does not deem it necessary to continue to integrate that. The other professional bodies do that a lot. The current specimen exams do not have that. So it becomes a challenge because uh, nothing says that because the specimen exams do not have that, it might not feature in future exams. But there's no clear direction there. I, 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 and I really think, given the way ethics confront business executives, it, it just makes sense. So it will be important as a tuition provider even though candidates would have gone through the ethics, to get on board those aspects of the ethics and make sure you integrate as part of the actual teaching of the course. So that candidates constantly, you know, so in case they were to face with this type of challenges, uh, if ACC was to change their mind, then they are able to, to, to move away from professional ethics and integrate uh, business ethics elements of it. So that's a, it's a major difference that I think needs to inform how we teach it. Okay, in terms of pre c uh, like we pointed before, all other professional bodies, some call it pre some call it pre reading some call it pre-release, different bodies call it different, and the basic idea is they give you some information about that company, six weeks before, nine weeks before. ACCA doesn't do that. Uh, ACCA has taken a rather different view that we're not going to do that, we're just going to go back. It poses a very difficult challenge because now this is two broad subjects. You, you find that even though CIMA would as you do a strategic case study. By the time you do that one, you would have done the three individual models and passed them. So there's a certain depth of understanding that you take into that. But now you're doing P1, P2, you haven't passed it, you are just taking it straight to the case study. There's some, some, some certain depth which might be absent. Now, if that depth is absent, we're trying to teach students in three, four months to get them ready, and they still don't know what type of case study they will have to face, it can pose some very, very uh, a serious challenge in terms of how you're going to package this and teach it. We'll share with you how we are thinking about it, but our thoughts continue to, uh, to evolve. So we really think there's a good side of that, but there's a, the, obviously the good side is that ACC can demonstrate that it is different. It is the only professional body that doesn't do tracing. So that is some element of differentiation. 
which is good. It also catches the student to make sure that you don't go and memorize things, to come and anticipate, which is good. But the bad side is for tuition provider. It can be very difficult to teach this massive thing in three to four months and not have an idea what sort of industries. I'm sure you bear with me. Different aspects of uh, this thing. If you, if you take strategy in the public sector, the way you apply is different from in the private sector. So if you have a sense what kind of sector you would be writing your exam on, at least you can adapt your teaching. But that doesn't exist in this case. So that's going to pose a major challenge, but we'll see how we learn from it and, and find ways of getting around that. In terms of uh, writing time allowed, obviously everybody is going the PC exams based route. So the idea there being you, you want as a tuition provider, you want to really invest in PC exams facilities and, and teach these guys within the PC exam and get them to practice how to write their stories or their reports in these PC exams format. All right, uh, most of the exams are three hours. ACC has gone four hours. You, you could argue that because you haven't had the time to understand the industry, you have to understand it on that day of the exam. Looks like ACC has given some allowance to say, okay, let's do it slightly more time, which is four hours, because students will be confronted with that industry and have to understand a few things. So ACC has sort of compensated for the fact that uh, pre-reading is not provided to actually run with the four-hour exam. All right, uh, focus on professional skills, all of them, and this is a beauty, almost inherent because case is about how to do things. All the professional bodies are focusing a lot on those five professional skills, commercial, academic, skeptical, and all the rest. So all of them are doing that quite well. But here's what we found, and ACC and SIGA is slightly more explicit. In other words, for instance, you know that if you're doing a similar case study, there are four skill areas, technical, business, people, leadership. You get a question, they don't tell you this is now business leadership, leadership they are testing. They don't tell you this is now technical. They don't tell you this is now people. You have to find a way to figure out from the construct of the equation and the scenario to understand this is a skill which is being tested and therefore this is how I need to try and prove that skill, which is a big challenge. But AC has made it more explicit because even though they pointed uh, where the technical skills are and where the professional uh, skills are, every question as you're going to see, they actually tell you to say, in this question, we want you to, to represent communication skills. In this question, what do you give? So you, you it, 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 so it makes the teaching a bit more direct. So you can direct to resources made available by ACC uh, to help me prepare for this presentation. I drew some of the things that you provided from your workshop in, in Harare. And you say, okay, let, let's see what this got to do with SBC. This is very straight from the examination. A few things have been emboldened. There lies some clues. It's a substantially integrated exam. Okay, we get that. Everything should be done in the context of strategic leadership. We get that. Why is this important? It's almost like you look at a business, you start with a mission and vision. Every other thing down the line has to come. So if you understand what is the thinking of the exam, it can help you a lot in terms of channeling elements of your teaching or onto that. We talked about the area of the role play and that. Okay. Now, we mentioned these are the, 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 the areas. So after collapsing few and pieces, what ACC is trying to do. And the red is basically those professional skills. Okay. Now, what has that, this is very necessary, but what has that got to do with the actual uh, teaching of the course? We've already talked about ethics, the fact that ethics is treated se separately, so I'm going to skip that. And I've already mentioned that the jury is still out. Okay, let's, let's look at how these things are structured and what the subsequent the part that we talk about how this relates. Let's start with for instance with the first one, the real code. I'm sure you are aware with this process that the first specimen exam which was written was the real code specimen exam. Let's talk about the structure and the requirement. You notice a few things there. And it's almost something which you're going to notice is similar. It starts with a very brief introduction and then a number of exhibits. There's a website for the company. The website is going to talk about the mission and governance. The published financial, if sorry, published newspaper report about that, survey reports. You will notice that the start they give you some basic information. They give you information about operations, which is from inside. They give you some information. Whenever you're seeing a newspaper report, the newspapers always comment on the business from outside. 
So you see that with all the subsequent ones, they give you something about the strategic position, they give you something about what's happening at the operational level, they give you something about what the newspaper is seeing from outside to try and reinforce all those elements that we're talking about. So you find that these uh, newspaper report passenger surveys, which is given from outside, real meeting minutes, which is, has to do with the leadership and governance. You almost see a similarity between that. Okay. Skepticism, they tell you exactly what you want to do. Question the reasons for the potential acquisition. And you see the question that that moved us towards P3. Every almost other thing here is P3. So both are equally, uh, equally important, so to speak. Okay. For the power exam, we have captured that. It's a 100 mark exam, you need 50 marks to uh, they deal with 12 pages, more or less, information, all based on the same scenario. They have to apply technical and professional skills. So nothing much to, to summarize there. Now, what do we think, how do how we now put up all this understanding together to, to develop? So here's what we think is a blueprint. This is our own thing. You can take it, chop and change it, whatever you want to change there. Look, okay, step one, you appoint your finance to co-develop an SBA-specific teaching method. So you have to look at the school as well, okay, who is the best guy, who understands case studies, ready to do this thing. Find that best guy, or best two guys, and then work in some collaborative manner to, to, to develop a specific methodology. You can take elements from this, change it, drop some, whatever you want to do. Get that methodology centered around your best one or two guy, as you can see, it's a very big document, so we, 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 we're thinking you almost need four months. Uh, also, it depends on how often you structure your time to for students to come. So we almost need four months to really digest this thing and get ready to face this exam. Uh, again, we've said between 80 to 100 hours of contact time, that is split between tuition and revision. How you structure that over a shorter period is really up to you, but that's what we think. Uh, this and we've developed our timetables and uh, uh, taking that into account. Obviously, we improve on that. Your very next step is to develop a comprehensive integrated case study uh, to model your teaching. Uh, I wish there was time to show you a, a video of something we've developed, but I, I suspect that video is it's a bit too long. But here's what one is trying to point, point to. Hey, where is this, my book? My thick book. <laughs> Well, this was two books before, so if you focus on strategic money, focus on this, zoom into different elements, now they're no longer going to do that. Okay, so you want to teach all this in four months. And the exam is very practical. They need some working understanding of the acumen from this to be able to attend the question. So we are thinking, the best way to teach is to almost look at what uh, Harvard does. A comprehensive case study will find a case study which tries to address almost every element, especially those nine elements. Technology and uh, commercial acumen and HR. Take, find a case study. You can write one. We've written our own. So that we bring everything there. It's a big business which has issues with the public sector so we can bring everything. Now, you want to develop such a case study or find one which already exists. I've seen a few here, but they're just two different elements of it. It doesn't, so they give this for this, give this. So you need one business that is can be developed. So you see all the sides of how these integrated processes work. If you're going to do this for HR, do a different case study. To eventually put that together to really understand how this is integrated, to make it, it might be cumbersome. So our thinking is that you need something like this. I, I'm sure you can contact VETS uh, case studies and then they write a lot of case studies. I've seen some very good integrated ones there. But we decided to develop our own because there are things that we wanted to put in there that we couldn't quite, quite get. But the best case study said that I'm sure they can be of, be of assistance. So here are the things. So your case study, you want to make sure it addresses risk. It addresses each of these elements there. Now, ultimately, here's what we've done. We've said, OK, because ACC says it's about the strategic context. If we look at some of them, we've simply taken there and said, OK, let's rearrange this in terms of if it's about the strategic context, amongst the skill areas, what are the elements which will constantly be tested or examined at the strategic level? That helped us to rearrange this almost like a triangle, like the operational level, management level, strategic level. We say, okay, let's have leadership there. Let's have strategic governance risk directly supporting the role of leadership. And 
This, therefore, because if the definition says it's going to be a strategic, whether you are in P1 or in P1 or in P3, you want to emphasize this because a vast majority, they are trying to examine strategic thinking skills. So if these candidates leave your course and they have not really understood how these three, four elements are put together to move a business forward, they will be given very operational answer. And the examiner says, mm -mm -mm, it's not going to work. So we've rearranged that in terms of what we think the strategic emphasis would be. And then taking the other element and say, okay, this is where the operational, when I get here, I don't spend as much time, I link it to my value chain, I identify all the areas that are often a challenge at the operational level, cost, speed, dependability, flexibility, how to adjust operational to fit with the strategy. I focus on those, but not spend as much time. This is just a way to help make sure you cover as much as you can cover in those four months. Otherwise, it can get very, 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 very messy. So we believe you have to do something, uh, something like that. Now, obviously, we will take that case study, the comprehensive case study that would have developed as part of the teaching, as we go chapter by chapter, we link up all these things using that. Obviously, that is not a case study they're going to find in the exam because we don't, we don't have a precinct. But it developed their, their thinking in terms of how to use whatever is sitting in this textbook to apply that so that when they then face mock scenarios, they can begin to import that. So this is what we will try to do to do those adaptations as part of our teaching. Uh, all right, so we anticipate that the tuition fees, if we say between 80, which is step four, between 80 to 100 hours, we anticipate that we'll spend half the time, which is the tuition fees, actually teaching uh, the material and obviously the other half as part of revision. It's almost like 50-50. But obviously, whilst we're teaching that, we have to remain exam focused. Why? What, what is the point? If you see those things that we've put in there, we say ultimately we have got the strength of witnesses from the. We have to come back to say, remember that they're going to give a story about the mission and vision of the business, some information from outside, some information at the operational level. So when you're dealing with these operational level things, start helping them understand how it connects to each of these exhibits. When you think with the strategic things, start helping them understand. So whatever you're doing, you have to constantly, we only have two specimens or three. There hasn't been a lot of past papers for us to get a sense how the examiner, but the two or three clearly gives an idea of how they are planning to do this. So remaining exam structured focus is also to make sure when you're teaching, you tell them exactly how this is going to be used from the year or what type of exhibits can be developed on your scenario to help you really address that. All right, so we've also seen the other one. Those are the exhibits and how it links to that part of the teaching. And obviously, your very next step, you move them. Uh, like we said, it's important that they do in the PC exam lab. You move them to the PC exam lab, give them a lot of mock scenarios on case studies that they have not yet seen, but which tries to force them to use the sort of things that you've been testing them or teaching them through the uh, comprehensive case study. You want to take the internal lab, there has to be a lot of practice. They have to write more to review. Uh, and I'm not talking about the more when they write your table map. They, 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 you can give them a scenario, they build an answer, you debrief that in class. You give the next one, they build an answer, you debrief that. It's obviously, that's going to culminate, culminate into, a final, into a final mock. And obviously, in terms of doing you have to understand that marking rubric. That was the benefit that we as Chatterfers got by being part of that marking insights mock and joining the webinar in the, in the UK. We really were able to understand how ACC finally zooms all these big into actually earning marks in terms of the marking rubric and all the rest. But I'm sure ACC made that available. People who are not part of you can always log in, go back, look at the rubric. And it's, I think the session was also regular, so you can follow that. It's important that you understand this uh, rubric before you teach uh, the students. Otherwise, we might not get the kind of results that we are looking at. I, I'll just put the example of what that rubric looks like. How the performance an example of professional skepticism. It's almost like templates. What gives rise to a zero mark? What gives rise to a two mark? What gives rise to a two marks? Four marks? How they set that up to actually score it? Because you need that to assess your students and the rest. There's a lot of details there. Please spend some time. Uh, take the information that ACC made available. Go through this before you start teaching. Uh, the students, it's been quite helpful to, to ourselves. All right, so, right. Uh, we've looked at the exam structure and the requirement again in brief. We are putting through justice to that in one hour. There's so much involved there. 
All right, we've also shared with you how uh, we, how we as tuition providers, we think we should respond. I'm sure there are elements there that you will not like, there are elements that you might like. That's how we see uh, this going forward. Okay, so I can, if you permit me, I can deploy that into questions. Um, yeah, so any questions? Any questions that I need to uh, share? I'm ready to go back to the slide if you want, want me to talk to some particular slide. I'm ready to scroll back to it. But I'm now yours to take questions. Understand you say Sorry, your name again? Trevor. Trevor. Yes. And you're Patrick? Yes, okay, yes, Trevor. I wanted to understand you say that uh, your teaching method is you have one case study, then you use that case study to start your lesson, and we first go through the content, then we do the case study. I I'm not sure I understand you. You're saying we take a case study? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to use then in class to address the uh, content? Yes, yes. Ideally, You've marketed the course, you know your numbers coming in. Prior to them coming in, you would make pre-course guidance to them to say, okay guys, I'll be taking you through these 80 chapters in this thing, but you need to familiarize yourself with this case study. Read it back to back and make your own notes with no knowledge, that's fine. Because from the very first chapter, as I'm teaching, I'm applying it to that case study. As I'm teaching and applying it, I'm taking it like that. Yes, we've been going to make it happen. Well, I'll send it to Marika the slides. You can email it to everyone. I want you to understand you say that the teaching method is you have one case study, then you use that case study to start your lesson, and we first go through the content, then we do the case study. Think we take a case study. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're going to use then in class to address the content? Yes, the yes. Ideally, you've marketed the course, you know your numbers coming in. Prior to them coming in, you would make pre-course guidance to them to say, okay guys, I'll be taking you through these 80 chapters in this thing, but you need to familiarize yourself with this case study. Read it back to back and make your own notes with no knowledge, that's fine. Because from the very first chapter, as I'm teaching, I'm applying it to that case study. As I'm teaching and applying it, I'm taking it like that. You say the ACC, one of the drawbacks is Someone who's attempted the case study, they haven't even passed P1 or P3, so they may not have sufficient knowledge to be able to apply. So won't there be a problem in trying to do both at one time? Both the, the teaching and go to refer to the case study. What do we need to focus on them first, understanding just the content itself, mm -hmm. then go to the case study? But that's the part I captured to say, by the time you do a SIMA case study, you would have focus and pass the OT, so you have some depth, okay? Uh, I, that is one methodology you can adopt as a school. The chances are that you, it might need to, you might need to prolong. To say, okay guys, I, I will prepare people nine months or six months in advance. I'll use three months to go through, because typically you use three months to go through the material, then you go right. So you probably, you, you need three months to prepare them, and now three months now to get to that. So my four months was based on the fact that you're trying to do the two, to get them to be ready for the next quarter exam. Then you have to find a way to stretch it to 80 hours and do all that. But I think if you want to alter that and first teach the knowledge, then you, you would have to accept that four months as a variable and shift it to give you more time. But also if you've got full-time students, they may come to school more often. Oh, like the evening part time, they come once a week, and they, that's what makes it four months. If it's full time, they may come to school more often. So, which means you can take one and a half months to cover it. And then another one, I don't know, but it's really, but that's my thinking, really. Well, I'm thinking from a similar perspective, we still find it hard to teach the case study even after they have gone through the course. That's true. It's too difficult for them to apply. Now we're looking at new material, trying to apply it at the same time, so it might be really tricky. True. Uh, I, 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 <laughs> It's a very useful, I remember when we were doing the build-up as part of this thing, we raised that also to say, look, these two are already very bulky. To put it all together for students to get it and to, I think ACC's response has been that, it's, that's why they say it's, it's a practical paper. Okay, they keep, ACC keeps saying it's a practical paper, so unlike in the past where they will say, define Porter's five forces and use it to do the following. They will no longer do that. 
they will simply say, okay, we are faced with some competition, can you write a report? So, so you, because they have removed the theoretical emphasis on the question, ACC's view is that, therefore, you don't need to spend so much time to understand every single model as SIMA will test your multiple choice. So focus on the big thing. I, 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 would, would have to try that and see. My view from the builder was that it's still not going to work. We need to examine this and then examine our case study later. But that's how ACC has adopted. We have to work with that. Yes. Also I want to make sure questions come from every table. Yes. Uh, sure. uh, I also want to concur with the observation you've made about, um, you, you said in one of your slides, the jury is still out. I think when I was attending the, the webinar, I think last week or two weeks ago, one of the questions that kept on popping up is the duration that is allocated to reading and fully digesting, you know, the... What the, is going on? The, 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 yes, the sure. material. Sure. Even if it's 12 pages, is, is there enough time to digest? I, I know because I, I teach the SEMA case, study, uh, case studies, mm -hmm. and sometimes you have to go through the precinct material 15 times to fully understand and digest what is happening in the organization. Sure. Therefore now, obviously we have to wait until maybe the September exam <laughs> and see how people have performed sure. and then raise some of the issues with ACCA because uh, are based on the outcome of the webinar that took place last week. Mm -hmm. They have the view that the time is more than enough. I don't know, you know, if the time is more than enough. And also one of the key issues that kept on popping up is the fact that English is not a, a, a first language in most of the areas when you're looking at Asia and Africa. Therefore, yeah, I'm a bit concerned, mm -hmm. but I'm very much optimistic in terms of how the SBL is going to, to add in terms of the caliber of people that want to produce as ACCA. I'm very much excited about that, but there's still lots of questions, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I look at the content. I would have rewritten this thing from scratch mm -hmm. instead of making two books. Sure, sure. You know, because when you're looking at this team, one SBL leader. Sure, sure. And, and yeah, but um, we have to be positive and hope for the best. <laughs> but I, I, I like that. Uh, thanks. Positive and, and, and hope for the best. Mm -hmm. I did that mock. I couldn't finish it in four hours. I, I teach this on going, but I sat down, we told, do it for four hours, send in your results. Uh, I stopped at the fourth hour because I wanted to see how it was going to play out. But I had done about 85%. There was still 15% I felt I still needed to do. Now I sat by, I'm thinking like, huh. <laughs> I, I have to lead students who have to try and finish this in four hours. That was my first thing to tell me, well, the comment you are making is, is clearly going to be the case. I recall not the next, during the build-up, they did a lot of consultations, and some of these views came, and they were recorded. I, I think our job as tuition provider is to say, well, they've recorded, they've gone back, they've applied their mind in their wisdom, they've made a decision, we hear you, but this is what we were going to do. So we just now need to roll our sleeves and say, with tuition providers, let's do it. Let's do it, and do it as best as we can form a global WhatsApp group where us as tuition providers or lecturers can be able to, to share knowledge with one another, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a discussion platform on the Education Hub. Let's look at it. Let's, let, let's pose the questions. Let's see what else can be made available sure. for us so that we, we are ready for September or December. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Sure. You know what I mean? But I believe that there has to be a um, a concerted effort coming from all parties, you know, mm -hmm. ACCA making uh, the necessary material available to all of us and also us taking the initiative, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, in our, yes, we may compete in one form or another, but forming, um, you know, um, groups to share knowledge among one another, mm -hmm. uh, to promote, obviously, the ACCA sure. qualification and make sure that at the end of the day, when we're going out there, you know, we'll we speak the, the same language and we represent ACC because we know where we're coming from sure. in South Africa. Sure. Uh, look, Lucas, right? He was just telling me, giving me an example of what transpired in one of their open days where the parents said, please tell us about the CASA because that's what they know. 
But if we can now sit around the table and say, this is what ACCA is trying to do, and this is how we differentiate itself. Sure. Let's communicate that message to all our stakeholders or potential stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Believe me, uh, the qualification will gain traction. Yes, we've seen a bit of traction, but I think we still need more inspectors so that then there's more awareness of the qualification. Mm -hmm. There's something positive that ACCA is, is doing. Sure. But we need to go and sell it out there. Sure. But sell it out there with the mission that whoever comes to it will be able to to pass, sure. because there is no use in, in, in coming in showing people how great it is. Uh, it is but it's not people are, are not passing, <laughs> and hence I I will encourage all of us to say let's form uh, a community. Let's make sure that we, we look at best ways. I know the universities have a different approach from what we as tuition providers have taken. Mm -hmm. They they will teach this over a year. Sure. We we'll teach it over a period of three months, three months and then want people to write within four or five months. You know what I mean? Sure. Therefore, let's share best practices mm -hmm. and, and make sure that um, at the end of the day, we put the student at the center of everything we do. We want to develop the student that's going to go out there and pass on the first attempt. But Education Hub is the first place to look at. I'm up for it. I'm happy to be part of a suggestion like that. Okay, there is a webinar one which is very global. There will be specific issues that we face here as tuition providers in South Africa. So I think AC needs to take the lead. Yes. I'll be more than happy to be part of that and input as much because the profession grows, we all grow. So I'm happy with that. Okay, I see it's been noted. Thanks for that. I'm, I'm a bit worried. Um, tuition providers. <laughs> Like Donatanga said, tuition providers are ready right now to deliver on this promise. But what about the students? Because what I see now is more about this scary uh, elephant that is going to consume the world. And the students are even afraid. The scary elephant being the strategic business leader. Please. Okay. Now the students are afraid. <laughs> what is it that is saying? Not to address that aspect. Because we might say we are ready to do it. <coughs> but the students, remember we have two categories of students. Some are just graduates from the university, they will apply for exemptions, they have not done F1 to F9, they don't even know anything about the ACCA project. And some are already in, uh, in, uh, uh, employees who are already working in the finance department and got experience. Mm -hmm. How do we marry this? Is we are asking the ACC right to right to students. I would imagine that a session like this is being hosted by ACC. ACC they are trying to help us to be ready. And they are also seeing that we are not as ready as we could be. That's why they do these webinars. They ask us do your mock insights, mock send your scripts. Uh, to the UK so we can examine it. That's why they do the education of the whole to try and get us to be ready. I think we need to, to grab as much as all that opportunity they are making. Say, okay, I get this, I get this, I get this, but I still need this so that we're also clear what is that extra thing we need. I'm sure at that point, they want it to work. And if it works, it will also work. So at that point we can say, I have this, but I still need this. Then I'm sure they'll be able to uh, jump in and assist. And it depends on us to go and remove the fright from them and relax them. And, and we are very scared. And we know that our students won't do it alone. Yeah. 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 Okay, good. Any other question? It's nice when you are eating, I'm not eating, and you're fine. <laughs> I yeah, just it. last thing, but yes, it's fine. I, I, I think uh, my brother there, uh, I didn't get your name. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, you, you, you touch on one important aspect. The students who get exemptions, yeah. you know, because I will assume in the past few, 
most students actually were never exempted for P1, P2, P3. Yeah. They would get the nine exemptions and then they go start on P1 or P2. Sure. Therefore, yeah, there's going to be a huge adjustment sure. coming straight from university. Understood. Because if, for example, I were to speak about the university where I studied, Vets, you know, we're always focus on the technical side, sure. tax, auditing, manic, sure. and uh, FINEC. Then now I need to make the transition. And if you look at that thick, <laughs> it's theory, hardly calculations, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Therefore, that transition is going to be big for the students. Therefore, I think uh, there's going to be some change management that will need to take place even before we start looking at the content. Mm -hmm. I like your idea of saying, maybe before we even look at the content, Let's take the students in terms of what's expected of them. Let's give them the case study up front mm -hmm. and say, as we go through everything, we'll be referencing back to, to the case study sure. because that will make it easy for them to see their relevance. Yes. You know, because sometimes people, up until this point, you find students who are doing strategic level in, in, when it comes to SEMA, asking you, what is the relevance of Porter's Diamond? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Though they've gone through management level in sure, E2, they've sure, covered it. Sure. But they still don't know the relevance. What do you of use it? Yes. When do you use it? What does it tell us? Sure. You know what I mean? Say, let's keep the case study so that in everything that we'll be doing, we reference back to the case study. We must just get more case studies sure, sure. you know, that we can use. And if you, From you, where? you, you spoke, and I, we must get, I, I'm going to leave it. Okay. You've spoken about the center that you are setting sure, up. I'm not sure, sure. it's up and ready. It's right. Running. Maybe we're going to come to your doors and, and knock and say, we, we're looking for a case study. Mm -hmm. how, how many case studies have you developed? How much is it going to cost us? Because when I go to vets, as, as a corporate, I pay for case studies. Sure, sure. You know what I mean? Therefore, I think there's a new uh, revenue stream. I, I didn't want it to be seen to be selling. For, but yes, if you came to us, mm -hmm. we would say we have case studies. Yeah. Comprehensive. <laughs> we specifically talks talks to this, mm -hmm. so we, we we are and we're using some for our course. I think uh, is that cost involved? Yeah, the first one. Oh, no, no, no. Get the case study. <laughs> of course, there is. <laughs> there is always cost, man. Well, Valentine, yeah, just one thing. Okay, thank you so much. Appreciate. Uh, now we we sit here.